Well, hello there. I pray that you would talk to God about this message. It's about a quarter to two right now, I believe it is. I'm up and just really, really soaking in time with Holy Spirit by that be keys. I tell you, I needed that. I fell off to sleep and we've really been meditating on what has occurred here in these past few weeks and wanted to share with you all on this topic that you can see there, monitoring spirits and battle wounds. This may just be part one. I don't know, but I'm praying that I get into it all and uh, so you won't have to go back to listen to part two. But on October the 7th, I've had a what is called a closed eye vision. Now, I do that a lot as Holy Spirit will lead me to do it, and I think it was more specifically to make sure I pay attention to what was going on in the spirit realm, you know, in regards to, you know, my new book that's coming out, well, two of the books that have been giving me great warfare, and that is the one that's been called, that's called, Friendly Witchery, and the other one is called Visiting Right Cycles. Now, I knew that I was in the warfare, but I didn't know that it was going to manifest like it did. So the Lord gave me a closed eye vision on October the 7th, and what he showed me was two specific spirits. And these spirits, at first I thought when I woke up, not when I woke up, that is when I opened my eyes and set up, I said, wow. And they were shaped as what we call shadows. Many people see these uh, many women, most women have uh, what they call the man in the black hat. But these spirits were walking back and forth. Uh, one was kind of stout, and the other one was kind of like regular size, you want to say that, a little bit smaller than the other one. But I can clearly see that they were men. Now, men are witches too. We just call them warlocks. I talk really in- extensively about that in my book, Friendly Witchery and uh, Visiting Right Cycles. I think this is the reason why the Lord was showing me the great warfare. My book signing was supposed to be on October the 13th, but everything happened in accordance to what I saw and as I had been meditating on all what I had been going through uh, over the years with my life. And many of you all that are apostles, especially those who are really, really doing the work and uh, are having a difficult time financially and have a difficult time going through different challenges in your family and or your marriage and with your children. You know, it's all about our flesh and our finances and definitely want to make sure that the enemy work on us double time with those who we have great concern with uh, in our family. Now, I want to make sure I bring some premises here to make sure that you don't think that I'm trying to act like I'm so super spiritual and God showed me all these things and I'm exempt from anything and I'm so high up in heaven. I want to make sure you understand that, you know, on these scriptures that I want to give you right now because we've got to know that what I'm sharing with you tonight, um, I call it night because I'm still up and it's almost well, it is morning. But if you think about 1 Corinthians 2, uh, chapter 14, that is 2, two verse 14 through 16, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14 through 16. I'm reading in the King James, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. Very important to know, I am fire baptized, I love God, and I believe that I live a holy life. So nothing I am saying here that want to appear that I'm so super spiritual, you know, and that uh, I'm exempt from any type of, any, you know, any type of demonic attacks. We all, or once we give our lives to the Lord and we say we're going to fight hell until we leave here. But guess what? The Bible clearly shows us that we win. And the only way we're going to win is by faith, okay, and knowing the word of God and knowing truth and, you know, and piercing what we know that is the hell, the gates of hell with the truth and the light that's supposed to be shining through us. But in this message, I begin to think on it and meditate. I meditated so I fell asleep. That's why I'm up so early in the morning, you know, believe that I need to go and do it now. But John 3 and 31, I want to remind us that he that cometh from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth, he that cometh from heaven is above all. And I was trying to get to say this because we need to remember, no matter what I'm sharing here with you tonight, you've got to know that Jesus is all. He shines his light on the just as he does the unjust. He rules. He super rules. He's El El Yon, the most high God. He controls 
everything. He sees all. He knows all. And Romans 3 and 10 tells us, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And I wanted to bring those out for those theologians who may hear this to make sure you understand that my ultimate goal is to get those who need help to seek you know, the proper help that they need concerning this message I'm sharing right now. Now, when I'm talking about monitoring spirits, I'm talking about battle wounds, I was sharing with um, my board chair, uh, Dr. Donna, in regards to uh, she was floored because I thought I had told her about one of the battle wounds that I had. I think it was like toward the end of last year. Um, this was a, when I was writing a couple other books that I mentioned on my video that I sent out this past weekend. I was sharing about this past week. I was sharing about how one day I woke up and I noticed that I kept having these scars or these hits on my body and thinking, well, maybe I bumped my leg or what have you, you know, I find these scratches on my legs. And then one night I felt this pain on my arm. So I got up and I said, oh, what is that? But then when morning came, I began to nurture and take care of these long scratches that was on my arm. And as I began to research this and really pray and seek God about it, immediately I already knew that it was a battle wound from fighting this spirit this demonic force, and I know it had to be a chief demon because I remember fighting something in the spirit realm where it was huge, it was big, and it was trying to hold me down. It was trying to fight me, but I won the fight. And needless to say, uh, I won the fight. That's why we got to know the word. That's why we got to pray and we got to fast so God can have that so seared in us that when the enemy come, we can fight and war off these principalities and these powers that try to come to try to war against us. Now, this is one message that I, I didn't think that many would want to try to really, really soak in because many people are going through these challenges. Many of us are being challenged as we are in warfare with so much. But I wanted to bring that part out about these monitoring spirits and the warfare at the same time because this is where I have been since I wrote these books. I mean, I'm like, you know, this devil is playing crazy, and many of us, uh, we'll back up. We'll just say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm sure I had a lot of different attempts at me to make me be like, you know, wow, I felt this presence, you know, but I knew that this presence was not going to be able to touch me, but I felt this presence, and I knew that God was letting me know that it was there and for me to continue writing. Now, when I, backing up, when I experienced this, uh, this warfare, this battle wound and had that fight, with that demon, I knew that I had won. When I, got, when I finished fighting that demon, I jumped up out of the bed. I said, I take that. I mean, it just letting me know that, you know, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And when I jumped up and I said, take that now, because I know you're not going to be able to conquer my daddy. And, and But you, you can rest assured, I was shaking like a leaf on a tree because I had won that battle. I mean, that was a great battle. But one of the things that I want to let you know is that Nothing, no demon, no witch, no warlock, none of these things are going to be able to conquer us, but we've got to be so confident and so sure that we know that we're living a righteous life, that we know that the enemy is not going to have no gateways to be able to come in to be able to hold us down from old soul ties and things like this and things that many men and women, uh, you hear what I say, and women, that's got gateways over from masturbation and videos and things they're looking at and all this stuff. You know, I, I want to make sure you understand and thank God that I don't have those types of issues because I keep those gates closed. I keep my eye gate. I keep my ear gate. These things are very important because the enemy try to use these old things to come back. But I don't want to lose my time here. I want to share about the fact that these monitoring spirits, you know, the Lord has showed me these two entities that was like what they call shadows. And at first I thought it was shadows. I was talking to another lady also who's a prophetess. And uh, she was sharing with me, you know, I was telling her about it. I said, you know, right, because I'm meditating on what these two spirits, uh, these two shadows of these uh, black images the Lord was showing me. And one was following the other as though, you know, walking back and forth. Like one was traveling uh, like the leader. And I, I discerned that that was a chief. Uh, demon, and then the other one was like it was in training, and was following it back and forth right at the foot of my bed. I went, you know what? And the Lord let me see it, and I'm like, oh my God! 
Really? Really? You want to try that? But I believe that he wanted to let me see what the warfare that I was in. So but still now, I'm still meditating it all day long. So finally, Holy Spirit said, I need you to go. Now, my book signing was supposed to be on the 13th. He said, I need you to go to your website, give me your email, and you need to see your email concerning your book. And I'm like, no, you know, what are you say for? So I went on and looked at two or nothing. On the same day that I had the uh, vision in regards to these two spirits that Abba let me see, they had on there that my books were going to be delayed. <laughs> you know, for my book sign. I went, I started laughing. I said, really? Okay, really, I got you. I see now. All right. So I began to go into warfare and bind and loose and, and, you know, and everything and called them. And they said, okay, we're going to get them. We should, we should try to have them there in time. So then the next day, I'm still in warfare and fast, and the next day, Holy Spirit said, I need you to go back and check and see, because now there is another dimension of this warfare. So I said, oh, my God. So I got on the computer really quick, and I looked, and sure enough, the enemy had on there that you hadn't paid. <laughs> I said, this is crazy. You owe us, so we can't deliver the books. I said, the devil is a lie. These people got my credit card. Now you're saying you don't have the money. I started laughing again. So I said, you're not going to win. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to change the date, devil. So you might as well lose my books. If I have to change the date, I will. But it doesn't matter to me one way or the other because I'm going to get the books. You might as well lose it. The people are going to get the information. You might as well lose it. Well, true enough, the long story short, they did release it, but the books still are not going to be here in time. Don't care about that because it's going to happen. It's going to happen December the 8th if you want to be there to make sure because a lot of things I'm talking about right now are going to be in the books. You can get a revelation of uh, what I'm saying here so you can get some more understanding. Now, remember the scripture I just told you, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. Now, we're not talking about the things that we know of the fruit. We're talking also about the spirit of the, I mean, the demonic spirits. I want to make sure you know we got to understand in whatever we can get from Holy Spirit that is a wisdom that Paul is talking about here in First Corinthians chapter 2. You know, we got to make sure we understand. He said, but God has revealed what? Them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit teaches us what? All things, yea, even the deep things of God. And so I'm praying I can pray with you before I get off of here. So I got only six minutes to cover this part here. But I wanted to share what a monitoring spirit is. A monitoring spirit, of course, we know is one that really, really has a great tendency, trying its very, very best to make us believe that, you know, everything that we're going through is all, it's all intentional. It's all because of where we are in our life. And remember, I talked about in my book, Visiting Right Cycles, for those who are going to get it, be sure and look at what I'm saying there concerning the fourth generation curse. Now, when we talk about the monitoring spirit, I'm talking about a spirit that comes in and what its ultimate goal is to get you to believe that it's something that you must be doing wrong. Now, many of the things I talk about in the fourth generation, I'm sorry, in the mind, in the ruling, look at me, I'm so tired, tongue, in the uh, Visiting Rights Cycle book that I wrote and the Friendly Witchery, what I'm showing there, and you'll see in different segments in regards to, you know, that issue regarding to all the things that may have been in our generation, but many of those things that are in our generation is because many of the gates and the iniquity prayers have not been, been repented through, uh, you know, those who are blood bought, you know, for those transgressions and all those iniquities and all those sins that Daddy God did for us on the cross, many of us have not shut, it, shut gateways that we have still have allegiance with because we know it's really the religiosity. But these demonic and these type of sacrificial altars and covenants that were made before we were even born, and then after we were born, some of our parents were still living up, you know, living up to those rituals. We got to make sure that we understand that these covenants have to be destroyed. In my bloodline, my mother uh, and my father had made allegiance with masonry. You know, this mason type of mentality is a secret society. And those things that are secret are always going to manifest openly. And those things that are going to openly manifest are those things that are demonic, those things that many people are very seriously ignorant about. And so when I talked to my mother about it and tried to get her to understand it, her first thought was, 
you know, it was a good organization, the organization helped people and all that, they may have, they may do that. Just because it's something, a good work don't mean it's got any evil content to it. And so when we start thinking about monetary spirits, what this is, when you think about when someone is monitoring you or someone uh, is really trying to get things out or about you, it's because they're familiar. You know, they're, these, uh, they're aliases, if you want to say. Uh, these monetary spirits are connected to these ancestral type, like I said, of curses and demonic spirits, and they masquerade uh, pretty much like uh, watchers. Okay, that's the first thing I thought. I'm like, well, there's me and these two men watching me. So I believe that uh, they might be typing shadows, but I believe that because I know and I discern that these were men, that the Lord let me see these two uh, figures that were men, uh, I believe that they are, are warlocks, uh, uh, preachers that know me and those who don't like me that are praying against or about me concerning the ministry and the call of my life, which is just a matter because I know that greater is he and, and, and no weapon form is going to work. But these monitoring spirits, they're there to monitor you. They're there to make sure that everything that's assigned to us, all the, the things that God has promised us, all the visions, all the dreams, this is why a lot of us uh, are in a great war of lack, a great war of going through issues in our bodies, and many who are trying to get married or have babies, uh, they're not. I'm talking about that. Please get the book. Am I promoted? Yes, I am. But please get the book. I figured this is a good time for me to share this because of what just happened on October 7th concerning these uh, two particular shadows, if you want to call them, but they were monitoring spirits is what has been confirmed um, in the spirit, you know, as I meditated on this. But they're monitoring. They're there to make sure that, all the things that I'm trying to do for kingdom building because I love God, because I pray and fast and see God, that, that my spirit will get weighed down and don't want to do and don't want to continue because of so many things that I am going uh, through or so many challenges that I'm having, you know, with maybe my body or maybe my children, you know, and everything. That's to slow you down. That's to make you feel so slack are so uh, lethargic in the spirit that you don't want to do anything because you're so drained and tired of the warfare. But the devil's crazy. These monster spirits are sent on purpose. Many of them are coming through friendships, relationships. That's why I talked about the friendly witchery information that you're going to find there in that book. But what they do is they have conversations about you, crucifixion ones is what I call it. They really have nothing good to say. They really are trying to bring conversation about you, but they're actually trying to send word curses concerning you. And these monitoring spirits are really enemies of those who really love God. They are great spiritual attacks. They're there, and that's why when I woke up with those three long marks, and most of the time when you see these uh, battle wounds on your body, they're usually a three-clawed marks, and that's what they were on my arm. Three long clawed marks on my arm. And when I was talking to uh, Dr. Donna about it uh, a couple of days ago, I was telling her, I said, let me look at my arm now, because I know they were so deep, they left some permanent scar. Now, that's what the enemy really wants to do. It wants to uh, have, like, a territorial or a mark. It's really what it is to mark you, which can't mark me, because I'm already marked from my forehead down all the way in my soul with the cross and with the blood. It is in me. He rests upon me and lives in me. So that's not going to be my mark. But what I'm trying to give you uh, to me to get a revelation is to understand the goal of this enemy is to mock you, meaning to let you know that I'm here. If it doesn't mock you on your arm, on your legs, on your back, many people wake up with scratches on their back, and I haven't been through all of that, you know, and all of that on your neck. But one thing you can rest assured, it's battle wounds. But these monitoring spirits are there to block you. It's like a spirit of the blocker. It's a familiar spirit, and that's why they're very close. They're from your past, like I said, from these, uh, what, what you call these uh, sacrificial uh, altars or covenants that our bloodline has done, and we don't want to believe that they're still active in our lives, because these monsters, they, ma they masquerade as though they're there to be able to be like they call spirit guides. The devil is a lie. I ain't got no spirit guide. All I got is a holy spirit that leads and super rules my life. Oh, my God, that's my time. But anyway, I got to get ready to get off here, but I want to make sure you understand that we got to make sure that our discerning is turned up. We got to make sure that we realize the Bible tells us there's no weapons born to be able to form by the enemy that's going to take us out because he is greater in us and he that is greater in us. We know that we win. Psalm 34 and 7 tells the angel of the Lord encaps 
around those who fear him. And he do what? He delivers them. Do not listen to the devil. Do not be afraid. You know, that's why I started laughing when the Lord had already prepared me because of the presence that I felt, even when I was writing that book, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, Devil Dream Lovers, when I was talking about soul child, the enemy don't want these things to be revealed. He doesn't want. He promised us in Psalms 91 and 11. He said he'll give his angels charge over you. He'll keep you what? Not in just some of your ways, but all your ways. And it's up to you if you want to be kept. One thing that I've found, a lot of single women, they say they're kept, but they don't want to be kept. Many of them are watching pornography. Many of them are masturbating. Many of them are flipping around having a little sex. But one thing you can rest assured and know, Daddy see it all. He know all. And these Morrison spirits are having free access to your life because you're not shutting those gateways that the devil is constantly using. Many of us are allowing the enemy to use those gates to come in. No, within Dr. Murphy Hyatt, it is the spirit to come in and scratch you if you're so holy. Well, I constantly ask God about that. But one thing you can rest assured, many you think about Job, he suffered much. But one thing he was not going to be able to do is remember, he said he, you cannot have the so you will not be, you can do what you want to to his body. It's like we have with infirmities in our bodies, you know, that we go through with sickness and we recover. Same thing. You're not going to be able to get away with everything in this world as it relates to the natural realm. But one thing we can rest assured of, that he's got his angels charged and encamped around us, and we will never be utterly cast down. But you've got to know that we've got to make sure we bring our whole heart, not just some of it, not just our mouth, that many of us are saying that we fire baptized and we got all that in with our mouth. But he won't, according to Romans 12 and 1, he wants us to have the mind, body, soul, and spirit. He wants to have our whole body, our whole mind as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. I don't want to preach, but my time is up here. I've got to get ready to get off of here. But I want to bring that out to make sure you understand these modern spirits are watching us. They are, in a lot of ways, you can know that. It's looking at the fact that we are going through a great hitch, especially when it's beginning to be intensified and lack intensified and things that are going on in your house a lot of poltergeistic things that are going on things moving around and when i say moving around things are being moved uh suddenly things that because i experienced all of that moving into this place i'm at now but they're out of here bless god because they know if they try to come back that the fire of god and the blood of jesus is already sanctified in this house many of you need to clean your houses out too do some spiritual cleansing in your house because you bring it in uh or letting spirits come in through other people uh you know you don't realize these spirits try to come in and rest when you think you got it going on in here and they are resting and you got to constantly do constantly do some spiritual cleansing but these spirits are not there to, uh, I, or I'm not here to bring some type of scary message to you, but what I am here to do to bring some revelation to you to let you know, yes, you are in war. Yes, these are monetary spirits that are there to block you and stop you and to make you not go further. You hear me? And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, because I can't get to the fullness of this message. I pray that the plight and the thing that the enemy has sent to this person that's listening to me, God, either now I bind it now by the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus. I thank you that even now, God, that those that are in love with you, Father, I pray, God, that every curse, every transgression, every iniquity, Lord God, every demonic sacred that they have made a covenant with, Lord God, that they say is sacred, Father. I come against it by the power of the blood. I pray, God, that they will repent, God, for every part of it they've done in their ancestors, every altar, every covenant that they have made either knowledge of or ignorance of. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over them. I repent either now for all disobedience on my behalf of my family and my children and my bloodline just as Job God we're repenting for our seed and even now God we plead the blood and we command the turning away of every enemy every monetary spirit every witch every warlock in every trap God of the enemy we thank you God and we receive redemption even now even now by the power of your blood God and we break our curse we break our oaths we break our covenants even now and we thank you God that our all the poverty, they will shut me. All the lack that's been upon our lives, God, and our family, and our bloodline. We decree and we declare the blood of Jesus has broken every curse, even now. Has broken every monetary spirit, even now. And we thank you, Father, even now, as we allow our family to come in agreement with your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we are clear and we know that our bodies and our minds and our souls and our spirits belong to you, God. And we have chosen, they will shut to be a 
chosen people, Father, for your glory, God, a peculiar priesthood. We thank you, God. We repent even now for our ancestors, and we deny even now every access of every monetary spirit and every battle of war. Even now, we break the curse, and we break the entrance to our souls and our bodies and our minds, and we repent, God, for every generational dishonesty, everything, God, that is hidden, everything that we've accepted, God, knowingly and unknowingly, every generation idolatry, Father, we Push it back and we open hell even now. I mean, we open heaven, God. Our son, did he will sign there and we shut the gates of hell. We give you praise, Daddy. We thank you for it even now. And so, Lord, we thank you that every slightness of ignorance, God, every sluggishness, everything we neglected, all the lack and all the physical, Lord God, uh, uh, infirmities of our bodies, we curse it now. We repent for our family. We repent for our children. And we thank you. We repent for this nation, God, and leadership, Father. We, we thank you that you had the mercy and your grace to reign upon us even now, God. We thank you, God, as we repent for our ancestors. We're no longer boastful. We're no longer prideful. And we thank you, God, who's standing the gap even now. We take authority every ever against every principality and every power. And know the name but treat us. Yes, God. And it is so be, Lord. My God, my God. We give you praise. Thank you, Daddy. Well, I pray this has helped you, and I pray that you'll be able to share this message. And I pray that you'll no longer tolerate these monetary spirits. And no matter what they bring, just remember that greater is he, and that he has already set charge his angels. And you've got to set charge your angels every day and every breath you take. Make sure you charge even the warring angel, Michael, to fight on your behalf for what you cannot see in the natural. Holy Spirit, our God and our Lord Jesus Christ is watching and praying on your behalf that you will conquer every monetary spirit and every battle of the enemy. God bless you.